Hello, and thanks for checking out this video. In the studio today, I have an Eastwood Classic 4 semi-hollow bass to share with you. This bass belongs to a friend of mine, so I'm very thankful that I have friends who loan me their instruments to share with you. This is a semi-hollow bass, and it is modeled after a Gretsch model that looks pretty much the same. It is in the iconic red-orange color uh, that the Gretsch is also available in. This features uh, a semi-hollow body design, so there is a center block that runs down the middle. It has a maple top, maple side, maple back, and a maple neck that's all bound. The F-holes are also bound. This bass features uh, two retro-styled uh, humbucking pickups, has a floating bridge, a classic looking tailpiece. It is a completely passive bass and has volume, volume, tone for controls. The neck is also bound and it has uh, what Eastwood is calling uh, the shark tooth inlays. Overall, this bass has quite a bit of vibe to it and it looks cool. And you know when this bass comes out on stage or if you open a case up and this shows up in the studio, something special is about to happen. So it definitely oozes vibe. Let's play through some of the sounds. So today I'm just playing through my Line 6 Pod Go straight to the computer without any other EQ or compression. We're playing through a B15 model today. Let's start with the bass wide open. So uh, both volumes up and the tone all the way up. There is a three-way switch that allows you to switch between the neck uh, pickup, both pickups, or the bridge pickup alone. Let's start with the neck. Let's put the switch in the middle. So now it's both pickups, tone wide open. Bridge pickup, tone wide open. Let's go back to the neck pickup and let's roll the tone knob all the way off. Both pickups, tone all the way off. Bridge pickup, tone all the way off. Here's a trick I completely stole from Ian Allison from Scott Space Lessons. And that is to add a spring reverb to hollow body basses. So let's click that on. Let's go neck pickup, bass wide open. So tone all the way up with a spring reverb. I quite like that sound, so thanks Ian Allison, that's a great tip. Let's try this bass with a foam mute under the strings. Neck prick up, tone all the way open. 
I'm going to turn the reverb off. Let's keep the foam mute there. Let's use both pickups. Tone all the way up. Well, let's play this bass along to a drum track and let's see how well it sits. At the very beginning, the bass tone you heard there was with both pickups through a spring reverb. For this coming uh, playing example, I'm gonna switch between the neck pickup and both pickups in the middle of the demonstration. There are no other effects there. Here we go. What do I think about this bass? I think this bass looks great. It has that retro vibe to it. And like I mentioned earlier, when this comes out on stage, you know something special is about to happen. Now, I do have a few issues with it. I'll start with the playing position. Just from a, a comfort point of view, uh, this lower belt here is a bit on the big side for me. So I find my arm to just not be in the position I want it to be in. It's just sitting a little high. Uh, and similarly, uh, because of the bridge position, the whole playing position feels shifted um, towards the neck. So from a playing comfort point of view, um, it's not the most comfortable base for me and, and my body shape. Now in terms of available tones, I think most of the positions sound pretty similar. Uh, so as a result, despite there being two pickups and a, and a tone knob, uh, the tonal variations are pretty limited on, on this bass. Now, what it does have, it oozes vibe, um, but the tonal range is not very wide at all. Another issue I have with this particular bass, uh, and it very well could just be the strings on it. This bass is currently strung with flat wounds. Um, but I find there's very uneven playing spots up and down the neck and across the strings. I'll show you what I mean with the low E string. So right there, that G, the sustain of the note is different than the F sharp. There it is again, that note is shorter that note is even shorter. So I feel, especially in the low E string, it doesn't play very evenly up the neck. There are also some uneven spots across the strings. 
So in that position, this note sounds very different than that note. So this D string actually sustains a lot more than the G string. Here it is again. That note on the A string is quite a bit more dead. So even on this one fret, you get four different note lengths. So there you have the Eastwood Classic 4 Bass. At time of filming, these retail for about 750 US or about $1,000 Canadian, uh, and they are available uh, direct through the Eastwood website. And this is one of the few hollow bodies that comes in a left-handed model. So that very well may be a selling feature if you are left-handed. Overall, I think it definitely captures the vibe and the look of the Gretsch semi-hollow bass. There are a few uh, playing issues on this particular uh, sample, but it very well may just come down to these strings being, you know, dead. So uh, I would definitely consider uh, swapping out the strings or trying a different brand if this were my bass, uh, to try to kind of alleviate some of the uneven uh, areas. But otherwise, it looks great. Maybe it will work for you. Hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.